Welcome to Electron Online and in this example we're going to allow a block to slide down this, this slope incline right here but notice that it's a quarter of a circle incline. Notice that it contains, uh, it has a coefficient of friction of 0.1 which would appear to be a constant and indeed it is a constant. Also notice at the bottom here the coefficient of friction is zero so there's no friction at all. Once the block hits the bottom the velocity will remain the same. But there's going to be variable friction. The reason why there's going to be variable friction, even though the friction coefficient is constant, is because the angle of the slope continuously changes. And of course, the amount of friction force will depend upon that angle. And so therefore, we're going to have to use an integration technique to solve this particular problem. So therefore, it fits in the category variable friction. So how do we solve a problem like that? Well, notice we start with the general, the same general concept that the energy initial equals energy final, which means that the work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy must equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus the heat lost due to friction. And so here we can see that we have no work put into the system, that's zero. The initial potential energy it has because of its height. There's no kinetic energy. There's no potential energy final. There will be kinetic energy because all of its potential energy will have converted into kinetic energy plus whatever heat was lost to overcoming friction. So the initial potential energy would be mg times r. Notice that the radius of curvature here will be equal to the height of the block. And that should equal the kinetic energy final, which is one-half mv final squared, plus the heat loss will be caused by the work done to overcome friction. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to try and calculate the work to overcome friction separately here on the side. And so let's see how that's done. Imagine that the block is sliding down and will take an arbitrary point in its path right here when the block is at that point at that very moment in time. And you can see at that very moment in time we have mg, the weight of the block in this direction. We have the perpendicular component which is mg times cosine of theta. That would be this angle theta right there. And we have the horizontal component which would be mg times the sine of theta. So then we also have what we'd call the normal force pushing back from the surface compensating for the mg cosine theta. So there's a force in this direction that would be the normal force which is equal to mg cosine of theta, which means we're going to have a friction force in this direction. So that would be force friction, which is equal to the normal force times mu, which is equal to mg cosine theta times mu. So that's the friction force. Notice that the direction of the friction force is in the opposite direction to the direction of motion of the block. All right, so now we want to calculate the work done as it slides down the incline, the work done to overcome friction. So what we can imagine is that at this very moment in time, it's going to travel a very small distance from there to there in a very infinitesimally small amount of time. It's going to travel an infinitesimal small distance, let's call it ds, because it's along the arc length, right? So it's a small little ds, a small little arc length. And since the radius of this is r, we can say that this is equal to r times the theta. So r d theta is a small amount of distance traveled. So that means that the work done to overcome friction is going to be equal to the friction force times the displacement r d theta times the cosine of the angle between the direction of motion and the direction of the friction force. So that's times the cosine, let's call it phi. So that's by definition, because it's a dot product, the work done will be the, the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. And notice that that angle will be 180 degrees. The friction force, and of course I should call that a dw, not a w, because it's a small amount of work done by traveling a small amount of distance. And so my dw is going to be equal to the friction force. The friction force is going to be uh, mg cosine theta mu, mg cosine theta times mu, times r times d theta times the cosine of phi. <clears throat> Which means that the work done to travel the whole distance from there to there would be a total integral, would be the sum of all the small little dw's, so the work done will be equal to all the sum of the small dw's, which is equal to, now notice that these are all constants, so we have the mg r 
mu cosine of phi, that's all a constant, times the integral of the cosine of theta times d theta, and we're going to integrate from an angle of 90 degrees to an angle of 0 degrees. So we go from an angle of 90 degrees to an angle of 0 degrees. <clears throat> now, notice that the cosine of phi, that's the cosine of 180 degrees, which is a minus 1. So this will give this a minus, so this is equal to a minus mgr times mu times the integral of the cosine of theta. Now the integral of cosine would be the sine. So it would be the sine of theta evaluated from 90 degrees to 0 degrees. So this would be equal to minus mgr mu times, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 0 minus, when we plug in the lower limit, we get 1. And so here you can see that this minus will cancel out that minus, and the work done to overcome friction will be mgr mu, and that will then have to come in here. So now when we complete the equation, we get mgr is equal to 1 half mv final squared plus mgr times mu. <clears throat> now notice right away that we can factor out an m, so an m cancels out everywhere, and what are we looking for here? We're looking for v final. So let me go over here and complete that. So notice here we have a gr, and here we have a gr times mu. And remember, mu was equal to 0.1. So here we have uh, g times r equals 1 half v final squared plus 0 0.1 times gr. If we take this and move this to the other side, we'll be subtracting from that. So a full gr minus a 0.1 gr is a 0 0.9 gr is equal to 1 half v final squared. Multiply both sides by 2, we'll get 1.8 gr equals v final squared. And finally, v final will be equal to the square root of 1.8 gr, or gh. Now notice, normally, when we drop something from this height and there's no friction, or we slide something from this height and there's no friction, the velocity at the bottom would be the square root of 2gr or 2gh. Here you can see the 1.8, it's a little bit smaller because there's a friction here to be overcoming, and so some of the energy is lost by overcoming that friction. Let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. So this is equal to the square root of 1.8 times 9.8 times 10. And let's see what that equals. So we have 98 times 1.8. Take the square root of that, and it's 13.28, how about 13.3 meters per second. And that would be the final velocity when it reaches the bottom of that incline. And so again, notice how we do that. We realize it's a variable force, so therefore we have to calculate a small amount of work done, which is the friction force times a small amount of displacement, because we can't forget that the friction force is in the opposite direction, the direction of motion. So the force driving it down this way has to, is opposed by the friction force right there, so that's where the negative comes from. And notice then, when we integrate, the negatives cancel out. So the displacement is going to be a small ds. ds can be expressed as the radius times a small d theta, and then we integrate from there. So that's how we solve a problem like that.